All right, let's take a look at this fine specimen of a beautifully preserved All-American 5 tube clock radio that I found with this precision timepiece by Rolex. And it looks like everybody's here. That's the 35W4. 12AV6, 12BA6, and 12BE6, I believe. And it's just a general electric clock radio that was sitting outside in the dump for probably 30 years. I don't know, probably since the mid 70s, maybe. Got this fine audiophile speaker here. Extended range performance. Cord's been cut off. So we need a 50C5. It looks like the bar antenna is here. Get the air compressor out and blow the webs off of it. But let's see what we can let's see if we could get this to work. All right, let's get a good solid look at this. Man, plenty of desert dust in this sucker. Wonder what, oh I see, that's actually welded to that. So we got a, we got a, a spider here, a petrified spider. Let's take a look at that real good. It's kind of nice and we got some dust bunnies here. Now the key things with this are, of course, the speaker, the audio output transformer. In this case, the speaker's garbage, but the audio output transformer, the oscillator coil, the IF coils, and that's pretty much it. You can see there's nothing, there's really nothing to one of these radios. seems okay. It's dry. It's dry. It's all dry. Um, we've got two leads here. We've got three leads on the bottom so this had some kind of negative feedback or something like that. I'm not going to worry about the capacitors at all. I'm not going to worry about the dirt at all. I'm going to take our Remington gun lube here because I don't want to waste my good Geez, that's harsh Doesn't sound like it's rubbing. All right, so we need a 50C5. A 50C5, a speaker, and I'm gonna have to, cause this thing's got a switch in it, so I'm gonna have to um, figure out how to bypass that and a cord. All right, so instead of dealing with this whole clock thing with the switch and the clock and all that, 
I've kind of traced this out by eye and I'm assuming that this is the across the line cap. So I'm just going to hook our suicide cord straight across that capacitor. I got a tube in there. The first thing we could do is measure this and see if there's actually any conduct, you know, resistance there. I, I doubt this is any good. And it's measuring open, which is not a good thing. So I got a feeling one of these tubes is open or not making contact. We wouldn't want to power it up and have it let us down by not. Eh, crap. Well, that has to be the across the line capacitor. So the filament in this tube is open. One, two, three, and four. See, there's nothing here. And if I go and I move this over to the other side, then I got it there, but not here. So this tube is open. All right, here we go. Got a speaker hooked up. Um, new 12BA6 in there, a replacement. Got 400 ohms across the power line now. And here we go. Here's our suicide cord. Now, the whole idea here is hopefully something will blow up, right? Is, isn't that our goal with this stuff? And the tubes are getting hot. Tubes are definitely hot. Stand by a second. You know what, I can't believe there's no filter hum. Well, okay, we'll do some 
voltage measurement checks because we are getting some stations but it just can't hear it. So this would be the uh, high voltage side of this thing and we're at 109 volts it's not too bad and the low voltage for the IF 94 volts that's not too bad. What's interesting is these look like plug-in IF cans. These IF transformers are in sockets. So we are getting KNX and there doesn't seem to be much gain in the audio stage. Now touching these we should get a nice loud buzz. So the audio output transformer is getting voltage from here and then it comes over to here. Got 99 volts there. Then it's coming over to, let's see, here. Hundred and nine volts there, so that looks good. Um, the audio output transformer, at least the primary, is not open. See, what would cause this thing to be so deaf? I changed the 12 AV6. Like I said, I've noticed that when tubes are exposed to water, the water gets up through the pins, it breaks the hermetic seal and they go to air. So this is a common a common thing that I've noticed with that's why I wasn't so gung-ho to grab all that stuff because the tubes go to air when they get wet. If you ever come across a box of tubes and it looks like they've gotten wet, throw them in the trash. They're not worth your time. These would white cap in a while. ...was labeled Isis Phillips. Her actual name is Bayon Zellup, and she's a senior at Los Osos High School in Rancho Cucamonga. In an exclusive interview with KNX... This is a disc springs from Granger.com. New rotary and coat. This is right around the 71 is before the interchange. But yeah. young players who are on. Oh, check this out. Here by design. Oops, failure. Come on. Well, we need a little piece of paper to hold up against that. Just search for AM870, the answer. Okay, guys, 
Y lo digo con amor y con respeto. Algo pasa. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. Our number. You can cook. Okay. So. But Michael, but Michael turns and goes. This is uh, an honor bestowed upon us by uh, Governor Jerry Brown. Yeah, probably about five or six years ago. As well. I don't appreciate that. I try to hang on to everything I can and uh, on to the. All the Republicans want to do in Sacramento and. They have yep. oh, my my issue. Instagram. I got your favorite oh. coffee or latte, and I did. Atheists, I'm thinking of that wonderful You're going to see in your exclusive five-day forecast 68 degrees in Lake Forest right now 72 in Nora Belinda And we are seeing 68 degrees in Irvine The news brought to you by Mercedes-Benz It's 307 Emergency water restrictions in California Are now permanent practices After Governor Jerry Brown signed a new drought order today That means get used to not hosing off your driveway Or watering your lawn until it runs into the street Those restrictions are now permanent The governor's executive order 